Russia-Ukraine War, List of Key Events, Day 181 and Najib Razak, Malaysia's XPM starts jail term after final appeal fails. As the Russia-Ukraine war enters its 181st day, we take a look at the main developments. Russia carried out artillery and air attacks in the Zaporizhia region, where fighting near Europe's largest nuclear power plant has raised fears of a catastrophic nuclear incident, Ukraine's general staff said. Russian rockets fired at Nikopol, Kriviyri, and Sinolinikovsky, all close to the Zaporizhia nuclear plant injured at least four people, Governor Valentin Reznichenko wrote on Telegram. Kyiv has banned public celebrations commemorating Ukraine's independence from Soviet rule, fearing a mounting threat of attacks. Kharkiv and Mykolaiv have also imposed curbs ahead of Ukraine's 31st independence anniversary on Wednesday. The U.S. Embassy in Kyiv warned Russia was planning to attack Ukrainian infrastructure in the coming days. Diplomacy, economy. Russia's Federal Security Service accused Ukraine's secret services of killing Daria Dugina, the daughter of an ultra nationalist, in a car bomb attack near Moscow that President Vladimir Putin called evil. Ukraine denied involvement in the attack. Ukraine's agricultural exports are likely to rise to about 4 million tons in August, from 3 million tons in July thanks to the UN brokered deal that unblocked seaports, a deputy chair of the Ukrainian Agrarian Council said. Russia's embassy in London called Britain hypocritical for a statement by its foreign ministry last week that questioned Russia's moral right to sit at the group of 20 nations. This week marks six months since Vladimir Putin ordered tens of thousands of Russian troops into Ukraine for a special military operation an invasion on a scale unseen in Europe since World War II. Nearly 9,000 Ukrainian military personnel have been killed in the war with Russia, the head of Ukraine's armed forces said. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said 5,587 civilians had been killed and 7,890 wounded between February 24 and August 21. Malaysia former Prime Minister Najib Razak has been sent to jail to begin serving a 12-year sentence, after the top court rejected his appeal. The 69-year-old's charges relate to a corruption scandal involving state-owned wealth fund 1 Malaysia Development Berhad, 1MDB. He was convicted in July 2020, but had been out on bail during the appeal. The court also denied Najib's request to delay his sentence. He has continued to deny any wrongdoing. In 2020, a court had found him guilty on seven counts, centered on a total of 42 meters ringgit. 9.4 million dollars, 8 million pounds, which was transferred from SRC International, a former unit of 1MDB, into his private accounts. He was sentenced to 12 years jail and a fine of 210 meters ringgit, 46.8 million dollars, 39.7 million pounds. The defense team had argued Najib was led to believe the funds in his accounts were donated by the Saudi royal family rather than misappropriated from the state fund. They also claimed he was misled by financial advisors, particularly fugitive financier Joe Lowe, who has been charged in both the US and Malaysia but also maintains his innocence. In his final push for freedom on Tuesday, Najib's lawyer requested the removal of Chief Justice Dankumai Moon Tone Mad from the panel presiding over the case, in what was seen as a bid to forestall a final verdict. They claimed she could be biased as her husband had made a Facebook post in 2018 which was critical of Najib. However, the Chief Justice declined the request as she said the post was before the charges were brought against Najib. In her verdict, the Chief Justice said the five-judge panel unanimously found that the conviction of Najib on al seven counts was safe and the appeal devoid of any merits. Devoid of any merits she said. The charges addressed on Tuesday make up only the the first of five trials relating to 1MDB Najib's wife, Rose Ma Mansur, faces separate money laundering and tax evasion charges related to a solar hybrid project, to which she has pleaded not guilty. The High Court is scheduled to deliver her verdict on 1 September.